We were all so close. So close to being done with, with this. With a firm shove, <gasps> Nuncreed manhandled Luca <gasps> into the phone booth. Shh. What are you doing? It's out of my hands the now. The latched shut <gasps> with a mechanical hiss. <gasps> Shit. Is that the end? Well, there's nothing else we can do. We don't have any words. Pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. Oh my god, we found the entrance. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting oh, at my lord. Rim. What up geeks and freaks, friends and enemies, Kozlock here, and today we are going to be continuing chapter 4 in the timeline of choosing Tickle for Beck, in the timeline in which you chose the Tickle for Beck, when Tick, she tickled the big one, Tiss, and I'm thinking this is the correct timeline because in the cover art, you can see Beck has blue hair, so we're supposed to go down the timeline where Beck gets splashed, not Iggy. So, okay, let's continue. The best policy. Oh. <laughs> Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in a Boston panic? And Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. <gasps> For Rolo. Guys, Rolo is being held captive. You guys don't know that yet because you are in the other timeline. You're not in this timeline, but I know, but you don't know. Damn it. That's Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping look for Rolo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the Rox's truth. Rox's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling, but this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Well, yeah, she's worried. Her she's like, where's my brother? and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. Yeah. We're running out In of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. <gasps> Rolo and I were, weren't just playing in Weepwood yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse, but someone was there in a strange suit, and we hid in the dumpster, and it had a heavy bag dropped on us, and I think it was a body, and so we ran, but we got split up, and I ran home, and it's all my fault, and now my best friend may never come back. Roxy, still Just exhausted well. <laughs> and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground and thought. With a determined <gasps> sigh, she looked up at Luca. This never works out. In a lot of these games, whenever we trust the adults with this type of information, it never works out. And it all, and I hate it because I'm always screaming like, just say something, but it never works out. It's not your fault, Luca. Rolo is going to be okay, I promise. Drew herself up. I'm going to fix this. Luca, go home. But I want to help. This is too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around. I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. You go back to that little treehouse you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolo shows up. Sound like a plan? Wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. <laughs> you did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. Bye, Roxy. Don't touch that. It's so high. You really, you really, you, you. <laughs> you really believe his story? What other option do we have? Things have been strange around here leading up to the festival. My dad has been acting weird lately. Well, weirder than normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Oh, I thought, like, rubbed your arms in the puddle. Why is it so cold here? This place gives me the willies. Ooh. Oh, don't touch it, y'all. Right at the treehouse in case Rolo shows up. Fine, let's go. We already know what's going to happen at the treehouse. Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. <laughs> Don't sneak up on an old fella like that. Though I wish Juniper would sneak up on me. That grandma of yours used to hit it back in the day. I'm telling you, she baked them cookies finer than Betty Crocker. Do I say? Do I say? Sorry. Who are you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh, no. I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring. But the dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it, really. The whole thing's a waste of money, if you ask me. Any word from Rolo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rolo knows those woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. Silly boy's antics are just whole town word shape. Antics? We all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank, and he didn't get lost. Someone took him, I know it. How would you know that? Unless... Luca, is there something else that you know? 
<gasps> Mr. Nuncreed gently oh my placed God. one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Oh my God, he's in cahoots with my grandma because my grandma's weird. My grandma's being creepy and weird and sneaking around and having secrets and demanding I stay home, not to get my, 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 my muzzles into anything. And this one likes my grandma, so I'm assuming he could also be a bad boy. He's a bad boy. Also, the music is menacing. Dang boy, if there's something you know, something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Do not tell. <gasps> peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Don't tell. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. Don't tell. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. Yeah, don't it was tell. Subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! There was a shame. There was nah. a shame. Not a shame. Behind those eyes. Menacing. There's there's something else there. He's evil. A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rolo, maybe he could help. I'm done. I'm done. If, well, he's so worried about Rolo. Oh my god, let's tell him everything. Yesterday, Rolo and I were messing around at the old Valentine Mr. warehouse. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Hmm? Both of you? You were with Rolo when he went missing? Not exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? What were you doing in there? At first, we were just looking around. Then someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw of him. You got scared by some garbage. Well, that's why you don't go shulking at someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage. I think... I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash, boy. No, there was a name tag. It said, Deep Engineering. Mr. Nuncreed's <gasps> shoulders slumped. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Ugh. Why did you have to? I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep Luca you safe. Luca attempted to take <gasps> a step back, but <gasps> Nuncreed's hand clamped down on his shoulder. <gasps> but you Van Horn just can't keep, just can't help yourselves, can you? We were all so close. So close to being done with, with a this. With firm shove, <gasps> Nuncreed manhandled Luca <gasps> into the phone booth. <laughs> What are you doing? It's out of my hands the now. The latched shut <gasps> with a mechanical hiss. Shit. Is that the end? Well, there's nothing else we can do. We don't have As any Luca words. Pounded the glass. The floor dropped from under his feet. Oh my god, we found the entrance. The inside of the phone booth <gasps> was now a loose capsule plummeting oh, at my lord. Rim. Thinking about it too. That yellow suit guy. Remember the yellow suit? The one he's talking about in the yellow hazmat suit? He was kind of big, and this guy is also kind of big. Luca winced and pressed <gasps> his hands to the walls. No. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. Oh. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his <sighs> eyes with hesitance. Wait. He said you Van Horns can never help yourself. But he likes the Van Horns. He likes the Grandma Van Horn at least. He wants to he wants to get in Grandma's britches, if you know what I mean. So I don't understand why he's saying like you Van Horns. Two large figures in hazmat suits <gasps> his view. He's the one. He killed the, my papa and he's the one that stole my mama. <gasps> Do you think? Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. <gasps> he knows too much. He knows too much. You gotta do the voice better, girl. He knows too the much. End. Wait. No. This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Oh, shut Somehow up. Okay. Shut up, shut up. Okay, so all we have is shame to use for this one. So we can't, we have to go down the other timeline because we don't... <gasps> Darn it! I wanted to keep going down this timeline, but we can't unless we until we lock unlock more words. Well, damn. Okay, let's go back to Mr. Hazmat Suit, who is really maybe <gasps> Mr. Nuncreed. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile. I don't know. I don't have any hard job. I have my Metroid cup. He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. <laughs> Let me go! Ow! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his it. leg. Go stand it. He heard the go crack of glass go as the stone it. hit the assailant's mask. <gasps> With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Run. Chapter 3. How, how is Everything's this going to continue? The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Yeah. I hate her voice because not not <laughs> I don't mean her voice. I mean like I hate how she like and then she blah, blah, blah. chapter three. At the next morning, Only like the oh my sound god, of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Yeah, we're back here, and she's gonna be like, oh wait, but Rolo's not missing. 
So she's not going to leave to go find Rollo. What happens? Let me see. I finished a drawing massive jam last night. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rollo get up to yesterday? Oh, Rollo had things to do, so I just sort of poked around town. I set the jam down by the front door. There's two batches to drop off. Mm-hmm. One for Mr. Tolliver at the Bag and Wag. And another for Miss Fratelli at the diner. We're gonna go to the diner today! Oh, and Mr. Nuncreed, he said he wanted some more. I suspected, I suspected as much. Yes, he seems to have taken a particular interest in my jam. There are some extras in the basket for that enthusiastic gentleman. Oh, Just make sure Fratelli and Tolliver get the ones on top. No problem. Off with you now while the day's still young. <gasps> okay. Oh, she gets a phone call. Yeah, she got a in the last one, she got a phone call. And she's like, I gotta go, Rolo's missing. But now she's making a call. To whom I wonder. Hello, it's Juniper Hartford. Hartford. Oh, yeah. You're not a Van Horn. Before you hang up, just hear me out. I have a business proposition. The simpler matters is we both have the same problem that needs solving. Very well, we can meet tonight. I got some jam! Woo! Okay, let's go. Rolo? Oh yeah, he's not missing in this timeline. Okay, sorry about yesterday. Roxy can be so annoying. But good news, no more boring chores for me today. Did I make it to the old Valentine warehouse? So, what'd you find? Give me the dirt. Something happened there. There was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it... Was it aliens? I knew it would be aliens. No. Zombies? No. Alien zombies? What else could it possibly be? Rollo, I've got to deliver these into town first. We can catch up later. Oh, is it a whole thing? It sounds like a whole thing. Yeah, we shouldn't talk about it here. Meet me at the warehouse tonight. The treehouse tonight. The warehouse, oh my god. I'm not sure that this treehouse is that you sp I'm not sure what this treehouse is that you speak of. <sighs> Meet me at Mission Control. Roger that, Space Cadet. I like Rolo. He's got a good heart. He's also my friend. I like Roxy too. Roxy's like looking out for the people, you know? Well, mostly her brother. Hey! Is that moss on the sign or is that ooze on the sign? Hmm. Oh, is there green slime there now? <gasps> and do I meet Beck? Oh my god, there's so many things. What are you doing here? Wait, watch your step! Oh, sorry. There was a whole family of beetles here. They've gone missing. I thought they just sort of wandered around. Everyone has a home, Luca. Even Luca beetles. checked the soles of his sandals. I think we're okay. It's weird that they're gone. They went missing when the festival preparations began. You think the noise scared them away? Something like that. Just watch your step, okay? I will. I don't see any beetles, though. You can tell those jerks, it doesn't matter how many boxes they pile up. They ain't moving. <laughs> there's the lady. Oh, there's the commoner woman. The woman that's like, you don't hang around with commoners. She's not a commoner woman, but she's a woman that hates commoners. Hello. Oh, can't talk to you? Oh, I can't talk to anybody. I gotta deliver these, I guess. Are you Mr. Tolliver? I forget who people are. Are you Tolliver? I can talk to you. Mr. Wilder, I trust you have time Eris to chat. Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children, and heir to the Valentine fortune, had a way of making questions seem like demands. Certainly. Which seems to be the problem. Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. Oh, damn. I couldn't help but notice that the front page of this morning's paper was consumed with stories about this silly festival. Well, yes, that is the news of the day. But there was no mention of the museum, nor the foundation through which it was endowed. I'm sorry, Miss Valentine. My readers are more so interested in this town's future, rather than any one family in particular. So fuck you, bitch. Your family ain't important, ho. Who do you think? Who do you think this is? We ain't New York. What is This is some Outback Steakhouse piece of shit, and you're thinking, you're thinking you run this town? Bitch, there's no town to run. This is barely a town. There was a time, Mr. Wilder, when the going on of my family was the only thing this town cared about. Well, things change, ma'am. And you know, change is dangerous. 
If you finish that thought, I will make that monocle a permanent fixture of your anatomy. My apologies. Good day, Ms. Valentine. Did I give you the impression this conversation was finished? Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. Damn! Kill her. Rip her throat out right now. I would. Just... Bye! Well, good day, Mr. Wilder. So it was finished. You're just being a dumb bitch for no reason then. She's like, did... I thought she was going to be more to say. Did I give you the impression that this was <laughs> over? And then a couple seconds ago, she's like, okay, bye. Fuck her. Fuck her. Hit her. Ah! She's my favorite. Hi, Don. Hey, Don. They got you on jam delivery, eh? Yep. Hey, Don. Have you noticed anything weird around town lately? What sort of weird things? Stuff going on at the old Valentine building. Hmm. You might say I've heard some things. I'm working on a story about it right now. So what's going on? Can't say quite yet. I still need to follow up on a few leads. Keep me in the loop, okay? Sure thing. Have you seen the new kid around yet? New kid? Yeah, came in from the big city. Her parents both got jobs here. But get this, one of them is working for William Kerr and perennial- <gasps> You're right. Whenever he picked up Beck yesterday, he was like, Oh, I do have to talk to your parents about work. One of them is working with them. <gasps> Oh my god! Does Beck know that? Does Beck know what they're doing? Do we? we? I mean, we don't even know what they're doing. But does... Does Beck's parent know what they're doing? <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. And the other is working for Eris Valentine. And? The Valentines represent Beacon Pine's past. Perennial Harvest has positioned itself as this town's future. Must make for some interesting dinner table conversations. I can imagine. <laughs> Goodbye, Zon. Oh, it hurts to do that voice for too long. You're the one that my grandma was sneaking about with last episode. Miss Patilli. Patilli? Fertilli? Well, if it isn't my favorite little jam runner. Hey, Miss Fertilli. Look at you. Leaned forward and pinched Lucas' cheek. Oh, the baby. You're all skin and bone. Is your grand not feeding you? She is. It's just... I understand. You know, I taught your mama how to cook back in the day. You might not even remember, but you and her used to help out in the diner. Really? See that picture over there? That's you helping your mama back in the day. So cute, running around in your little apron taking orders. Sigh. Sigh. Huh. The whole situation just breaks my heart with what happened with Eleanor. <gasps> Break. We got a new word. I got a feeling she's out there somewhere, yearning to be with you again. Thank you, Miss Fertilli. You seem much nicer in person. Hmm. Few things in this world can keep a mother from her son. Lucas shifted the basket uncomfortably. Oh yes, let's Mrs. see here. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. Ah, they even have my name on them. How thoughtful. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. You tell your grand hello for me, Luca. Will do. I wonder if there's something to this jam. Jam. I want to see the picture. I want to see what Mama Luca looked like. Mama Van Horn. Oh, we're not going to get to see her. If I could just be left alone, young Mr. Van Horn. Oh, sure. Sorry to bother you. It's just that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kerr has asked me to make the opening speech at the festival. Being mayor and all, you might expect me to be a charismatic speaker. The truth is, I'm terribly nervous. I really don't think I'm cut out for this sort of thing. Cut out for being mayor or for public speaking? Both, I suppose. I never really chose any of this. It's more of a duty to my family, for our legacy. That sounds like a heavy burden. As for the festival, just speak from your heart. I'm sure it'll be great. His heart? He's gonna be like Eeyore, bringing everybody down. He's gonna be like, Though we've had a lot of people gone missing, and a lot of people are dead, and a lot of people think there's no hope, and a lot of <laughs> It's just gonna be like that over and over and over again. Who's Tolliver again? I don't remember who Mr. Tolliver is. That's Nun Creed. Where's Tolliver? Um, here you go, Mr. Nun Creed. Got some jam for you, Mr. Nun Creed. Luca, you seem chipper. Well, aside from being on delivery duty, it's a nice Mr. day. Nun Creed eyed Luca for a mm. moment, then nodded in agreement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I suppose it is. So, do you want your jam? Oh, right. Usually Juniper drops those off herself. I guess she's busy today. Luca handed the jam to Mr. Nun Creed, and he nestled it with both hands. Ho, little ho. Well, I'll just have to finish this batch off quicker than normal. You tired to go ahead and get started on my next order? You got it. 
You're Mr. T Oliver. Huddled at his counter, Hiram <coughs> Tolliver was meticulously <coughs> shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. Oh, you nervous, buddy? Hello? Hey. With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Oh, sorry. <coughs> ah, no bother, no bother. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. I see you ha ha have something for me. Yeah, Gran had some jam I'm supposed to he give you. leaned in a bit further. Jam? Yeah, these ones on top. She wrote your name Mr. on them. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. There's something about this jam. Ah, oh, yes, the jam. Thank you so much for delivering this jam to he me. He forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. I shall put it on my store shelves post haste. This is my last delivery. Can I just leave the basket here with you? Of course. Of course. He leaned in for a final whisper. Of course. He thinks I know, but I don't know. Beck. Do you think Beck remembers me? I'm gonna be so happy if Beck remembers me. <laughs> hey you. Anchovies or pineapple? What? Don't think. Just answer. Pineapple. Why? How old are you? Twelve. Perfect. Follow me. Who are you? Anyone ever tell you? You ask too many questions. Just try to keep up, okay? Beck! I'm coming! What just happened? Well, wait, hold on. I want to talk to them. Oh, well. You're using me for something, I know it. You guys work for them. I wonder if they're evil. Do you think they're evil? <gasps> I mean, she got red eyes. She has kind of like a vampire thing going on and her. I wouldn't call her evil, but that's exactly why she might be evil. Cause she seems kind of, she could be evil with like a sweetness, you know? Hey, what a crazy coincidence. Here's my new friend I was just telling you about. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep, we just hit it off. Oh, really? Get this, his favorite pizza topping in the whole world is pineapple. Oh, um, and what is your new little friend's Beck name? locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Uh, Luca Van Horn, nice to meet you. I'm Nelly, and this is Alona? Alo Ilona? Ilona. We're Beck's Beck parents. gave Luca a quick nudge. Oh yeah, Beck told me all about you. Already feels like we've known each other for years. So you both can stop obsessing about me making friends. Oh, darling, we never doubted you. It's just that for children with fewer than five close friends, the probability of a stunted development doubles. Girl, there's only like three children in this town. What do you mean less than five? Well, one down, four to go, I guess. What Nellie means is that we just want this move to be as easy on you as possible. You can relax. A friend has been friended. This calls for a celebration. Luca, you must join us for dinner tonight. Yes. Dinner? Wow, another coincidence. I actually already asked him and he said he would love to. It's just... wonderful. In that case, we should pick up some groceries. You two don't get into too much trouble now. Oh no, poor Luca. Hi, Beck. How are you? Well, can't believe that worked. Thanks a ton. You're welcome. I owe you one. My moms are great and all, but they can be a bit much sometimes. Our house is- Your moms! You're right! They are moms! Oh my god! Beck and I are the same! I also have moms! I don't have- Can you tell I didn't- I wasn't raised by a father figure? How'd you know? How'd you guess? What? Oh my god. Yeah, I was raised by two mamas! And Beck was raised by two mamas. Beck, you're my new favorite. I'm just kidding. Dawn's my favorite. Dawn's my absolute favorite. I love bats. Bats are so cute! Our house is the little cottage next to that big mansion place! I know where that is! Wait, you live on the Valentine Estate? Yeah, that's the spot. Meet me meet me by their big creepy gate. Don't be late. Or I'm back to square one on this whole friend grift. Eh. Great, see you there. I like Beck. Beck's got energy. Charisma. Pizzazz. You know? Um, uh, who are you? Are you? Okay, are you this guy? This guy? You played the place that shut down? Yes, you are! Good morning, Joff. What's so good about it? Another day further down the doom you me! Come on now, it's not all bad. The festival's coming up. <laughs> oh man, 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 you put down the cock and the shim all the time. Where did that get? Well, it's the perennial harvest playing on this one. I'm sorry, I, I'm into character. 
And they're doing it for the whole town. As far as I see, the difference between the old mountain company and the new mountain family harvest outfit. Jeff dug through his pockets for a bit. Is the difference between this empty soup can and this brown and bolt trash? But those are both garbage. Exactly. Yeah, there's something amuck going on. I still don't understand what's going on. Hey, Jace. Oh, hey, Luca. Have you seen this new issue of Hank Atomic? Not yet. No spoilers, please. It's awesome. It's a flashback. No spoilers, please. We get to see how mild-mannered Henry Adams becomes. Hank Atomic, man of space justice. Jace, no spoilers. Oh, sorry. My point is you're going to love it. All right, Jace, catch you later. Roger that, space cadet. Hi, Pangy. Hey, Kato. Good afternoon, Luca. Can I help you find something? Maybe, maybe not. Try me. Well, there's been some weird stuff going on at the old Valentine warehouse. Can't say I know anything about the old warehouse. But empty hives don't stay empty for long. Huh? Kato motioned to the book in front of him. The more I read about bees, the more similarities I see with people. If a hive collapses and fails, it doesn't stay empty for long. A new queen will set up shop pretty quickly. So you're saying it would make sense for someone new to start using the warehouse? Nature aboard the vacuum. Oh. Oh my god, can I play with the telephone? Let me play with the t Come on, I wanna play with the telephone. I wanna get caught in the facility. Maybe there's a magic number he presses too. Hey, Beck. So, who all lives in that house? Eris and Gus Valentine grew up there. And Solomon moved in a few years back. The creepy little kid in the vest. That's, that sounds like the one. So, just three people live in that huge thing? I bet a bunch of shady stuff happens all the time in a place like that. Not really. The Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring. Pretty much. What a waste. My mom says that it used to be way busier back before Sharper died. Before the foul harvest. Okay. That's like the fifth time someone mentioned this foul harvest thing. And you all use that same ominous tone. Eventually you're going to explain to me how that harvest got all fouled up. But we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. Answers. There's going to be a political dinner, I believe. I hope. I hope. I want to get answers. They're both on different sides. Most kids would have just ditched me by this point. Why are you still here? You look like you could use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get through this as, simple as, as simply as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. Fun. Great. Whatever you do, don't break up their work. Don't bring up their work. I think I can handle Beck that. Took a long I need to bring up their work. Firm nod. I need to bring up their work. Here goes nothing. I need to bring up their work. Chapter four. <gasps> Dinner with the Moodwills. When we were in chapter four, and we were in chapter three. Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. <gasps> a gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change. Relied on it even. Uh Red Eyes is Iliona. But there was a difference Ilona. between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Nellie's the other one. Love, couldn't find the dishes. The chip we'll one one. with paper plates. That's fine. Dinner went by without I used to eat on a paper towel. I know my friends will send me like pictures of their food and they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry about the, the, the tabling or like the plating. And I'm like, bitch, I used to eat off a paper towel. Shut up. I don't care about your tabling. <laughs> it looks fine. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things <sighs> she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. I have a feeling they're actually really good at heart, and but they're getting caught up in a huge she mess that do they that. don't know about. So Luca, tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you live? Oh. I live with my grandma, over on the other side of the river. Your grandma? Where are your parents at? Beck, manners. It's all right. My dad passed away in, a, in an accident at the fertilizer plant six years back, which I still need to know more about. Oh dear. My mom's been missing for a few months now. Like, missing, missing? Luca's eyes were fixed <gasps> to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. <laughs> Nellie was the one who eventually broke the silence. Luca... How did you like the pizza? Oh, it was good. Very good. Oh, he's gonna cry. No. Normally we'd have put more effort into Ilona dinner. nervously gestured toward the boxes. We aren't fully settled in, and Beck had mentioned that it's your favorite. I'm sorry, are we just skipping the part where he said his mom was missing? Beck! 
I'm sorry, Luca. This move has got us all a little Luca tired. Wiped his face with his sleeve. <laughs> no, it's fine. So Beck said that you moved here for work. Beck gave Luca a soft <laughs> kick under the table. I need to know, Beck. I'm sorry. Ow. I mean, what brought you to Beacon Pines? Oh, you were right the first time. We're here for work. Nellie won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. Oh my god, I have some slime for you to sample. Can you please tell me what it is and what it's doing? I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. Perennial Harvest just made their newest lead researcher of deep engineering. <sighs> oh no, I hope she... Oh no. Maybe the old deep engineering guy got smart and was like, I know what's going on here, and the company silenced him. You know what I mean? And then they did that to his body. <gasps> and I hope... Oh my god. This is all gonna go so shit before it gets better. I'm telling you. She makes it sound more in impressive than it is. I I'm just happy that I get to make a difference in the world. Perennial harvest is at the forefront of evolving agriculture, and is something more useful than sprinkling water and excrement on the ground. Luca glanced over to back. She seemed to be holding her breath. <gasps> what Nelly means, Luca, is that there are different ways to grow plants. Yes, some people talk to their plants and hope for the best. And some people happily leave their job to allow a loved one to pursue their dream. Oh. Oh, so y'all are at odds about this. You swore you Beck didn't- slammed her fist into the table. <laughs> perhaps harder than she intended. Oh. Hey, hey, Luca. How about some dessert? I actually have to meet my friend Rolo Luca soon. Luca outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected. Filled with ominous clouds. Oh. Looks like there's a st- <laughs> Looks like every time- Okay, I can't read it in Luca's voice because every time someone says this, I have to say it like this. Looks like there's a storm brewing. I should get going. Oh, I didn't think there was any rain in the almanac. Yeah, almanacs aren't that useful Luca around here. Luca his mouth one last time with his napkin and started oh, to get out. I don't have a napkin. Thank you all for the pizza. It was really good. See you at the festival, Beck? No, Beck, come on. Beck, come with me. Beck's gonna follow. Wait up. I'll walk you home. She did her Surprise. unlucky coin. Luca turned around. She did her... Rolo could be prickly around new people. I got no cash value is what it landed on. I don't know if you can see that. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually, probably. As the clouds began to rumble, break. Well, break would mean that it's a clear night and then rumble would mean it's a stormy night. So do we go stormy or do we go not stormy? Let's go not stormy, let's have it a chill. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer <gasps> night. Moonlight filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Yes, it's the beautiful night. Sure, you can meet Rollo. You're not going home? No, I promised Rollo I'd tell him Luca about- stopped himself mid-sentence. Promise you tell him what? Spit it out, bub. We're thick as thieves now. If there's a juicy secret, you've got to tell me. Okay. You can come to the treehouse and I'll tell you both what happened. Heck yeah. Yes! Wait, you don't know where it is. Beck, don't, uh, don't run Luca off, Beck. Saw Beck skulking by the gate. Uh, where are you skulking? So you're telling me there's nothing mysterious or creepy about this place? That is not what I said. Honey, there's a lot going on. It's mostly boring and empty. I refuse to believe that. Big spiked gate. Looming mansion. Rich, reclusive owners. <laughs> it even smells Beck shady. grabbed the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. Hey! Mark my words, you decadent nightmare house. You will reveal your secrets to me! What did you do? First of all, I told you so. Second, hide. Ugh. <gasps> Eris in the hazmats. That's Eris Valentine. Who's, who's that she's talking to? Shh. I expect you to return that suit in working order. I don't know who this is. Of course. As long as everything proceeds as planned. There's nothing to worry about. The only thing I'm worried about is what's rightfully mine. If that means making some unsavory alliances, so be it. I couldn't agree more. 
There comes a time to suspend hostilities. I'll deal with our common threat. Now this is what I was talking Dex's about. Dex's voice was an excited whisper. <laughs> Proper shady stuff. Someone in a suit like that tried to grab me yesterday. Seriously? Shh. You do understand that when this all inevitably, inevitably fails, I will deny everything. I wouldn't expect any less of you. You just worry about your part in this and let me handle the rest. I can't wait to see the look on that Rube Kerr's face. Yes, the truth will come to light. I'm still surprised you're so comfortable with that potential collateral damage. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that change is painful. Well, I was expecting Shady, but that's just flat out super villain talk. If you don't mind me asking, why? Why are you doing the all this? The mysterious figure retracted their mask. <gasps> hair pushing out from all corners. <gasps> it's my grandma? My grandma tried to grab me yesterday? What? Family. A chill ran down Luca's spine. His vision blurred. Vex stifled a sharp wince, and Luca looked down to see himself wrenching her hand. An answer I can certainly respect. Gran tussled her hair back under the face mask. Grandma! Grandma got secrets! Not only does Grandma have secrets, Grandma is throwing dead bodies in dumpsters? The fuck? Just remember, keep everything nice and normal until the festival. I don't need lessons in rousing suspicion. Gran gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. Grandmother, you need some, you got, you got some splitting to do. <gasps> Chapter five. The grandma? She can't tell me shit no more. She can't tell me shit about where were you? What were you guys doing? What were you guys doing? Where are you? Where were you? We better answer me right now. No, she can't tell me shit no more. All right. No. No. Also, where's my mother? My mother disappeared with you hazmat people. And I don't know if my father has anything to do with you hazmat people. But I have a feeling. So you know where my mother is, Grandma, and you're just playing it, what, cool? You're like, don't you, uh, well, Eleanor isn't here yet. Fucking snake, snake in the dim fucking grass. I mean, is that a snake? Yeah. Get it out of here! <laughs>